Hey. Hey! You're Lily, right? You can call me Judith, but I'm sure you already know about me, right? I happen to be your husband's previous wife. Are you surprised to be hearing from me of all people? <laughs> I'm sure you are right now. Hello? Well, whatever. I'm sure that this is your number and that you are getting all these texts right now. Well, listen here. I happen to have a request for you now that you're married to my ex-husband. I just left my kid at the front door of the apartment you both are living in now. I'd like for you to look over them while I'm gone, all right? Ugh, I'm going to be late for my plane. I need to get going to the airport right now. What? Um, who, who even are you? Hmm? Oh my, so you're going to respond to me like that now? <laughs> I told you just who I am a few minutes ago. I happen to be your husband's ex-wife. Huh? My husband's and you're his ex-wife? What are you talking about right now? Ooh, perhaps he's really never even told you about me before? Well, that child I just dropped off by your front door, it's your husband's. That's the child that he and I had with one another. And when he and I got divorced, I took custody of the child and have been raising them all this time. However, I just happened to get myself a new boyfriend. And right now, I'm on the way to Hawaii with that boyfriend of mine. So, for the next month while I'm out of the state, I want you guys to take care of his kid. <laughs> Hold on for just a moment. I don't even have a husband right now. What? And actually, what is this about you leaving a child at the front door of my apartment? I don't even have an apartment as I'm living with my parents and this place is a house. It's not even a place that you could even mistake for an apartment or a rental house at that. I believe that you must have the wrong number or something because none of your story is matching up with my life. Can you check the number you're texting one more time for me? <laughs> but you're Lily, right? So that means you're the same woman that my ex-husband is married to. And that child I've left with you is my ex-husband's child, your current husband's. So since you're his wife now, you get to watch over the kid for one month or so until I'm back home. Understand? But here's the thing. I don't have anyone I call my husband right now. Oh, is that right? From what I've heard, you're not even able to make a baby, right? Huh? I'm sure that you're super jealous of the fact that I've had a baby with your husband, but there's no helping that, now is there? Well, I'll let you have a month to experience just what it's like to have to care for and raise a kid of your own. Have fun now. Wait, I haven't even seen any child around this house whatsoever. Shut the hell up and just take care of my kid. You have one month to love that child for me until I'm back home. Now I'm going to be blocking you and your husband's phone numbers. Hold on for just one second, please. See you later. I literally have zero clue what you've been talking about this whole time. What the hell is going on here? Angela, I think that I've just been wrapped into something really strange and have no idea what to do about it. Hmm, what's going on with you then? Well, I got this really odd text from someone I've never heard of before. And it has something to do with this person dropping off their kid at my parents' house? Well, actually, she said it was at my apartment door where she dropped her kid off, but I don't have an apartment right now, right? But she didn't believe me and said that I'm going to have to care for her kid now, but I don't even know where this kid is or what apartment they're at. Can you please give me some advice on what's going on here? Do you know who this strange woman might even be? Uh, hold on a sec. My parents just called for me. Huh? All right, then. Thank you for waiting, Lily. I'm sorry that I had to get up and leave right when we started to talk. Actually, something really crazy just happened here, and it's not good. What's happening with you all now? At the apartment that my older brother and his wife were living at, his ex-wife dropped off their five-year-old daughter that he had with her and left. Huh? They just left that kid there for the time being he's going to bring his daughter back to his parents house and there they'll figure out what to do with her but he's not even able to get a hold of his ex at all and having to take on a kid who he was never given custody of is a real problem for him and his wife 
So this is about Brennan's kid then, right? I never knew that he got remarried. Ah, that's right. He did a little while back, I think. And in your case, you used to be his girlfriend, so I wasn't really sure when the best timing was to tell you about him and his new wife. I'm sorry that I'm only getting around to telling you now after the fact that I told you about his problem. You don't have to be sorry about it. I've always known that Brennan has a lot of women in his life, and that he wanted to see other people. So we both broke up, agreeing it would be for the best for both of us in the long run. So you really don't need to worry about me when you talk about him, because I have no hard feelings. All right, thank you. But right now, we really don't have to talk about him and his current wife. What we need to talk about is his daughter, and the fact that I think I'm wrapped into that situation for some reason. Wait, what? Well, look, I happened to get an odd text from this woman named Judith just a little bit ago. Judith, huh? That's the woman that used to be married to Brennan. I knew it had something to do with you guys. Well, right now, that Judith woman has me confused with whoever your brother is married to and thinks that I have to care for his daughter. She told me she left her child in front of my apartment door and that she'd be gone for one month with her boyfriend in Hawaii. And she told me that I'm the one that'll have to watch after her kid now. Are you kidding me? I have no idea why she ended up thinking my number happened to be Brennan's wife's number. I'm going to bring my brother over here now. Uh, all right. He's here. Um, he's telling me that every three months he's been going out to see his daughter, but his ex-wife Judith comes along with them. And at one point she asked for him to remarry her, but Brennan was going out with you at the time and told her no. Ah, actually, during that time I had a little peek at his phone while he was talking with someone. That was probably him talking to Judith about it. He doesn't seem to really hide a lot of his personal issues from others, and perhaps that's why you were able to notice something on his phone like that. So this all has to do with him and his ex's daughter, then? Right now, Brennan is saying sorry for having this all affect you in some way. Tell him that it's all right. By the way, do you think it's a good idea for me to screenshot everything Judith and I talked about and send those to you? I think that she was really trying to talk with Brennan's wife about this, so she should be made aware, right? I'm sorry, but could you please do that for us? Right now, none of us even talk with her anymore because we all cut ties to her, so you're our only way of seeing what's going on here. I see. I'll send you the screenshots right away. Thank you, Lily. That'll help us a lot. Lily, thank you for those screenshots. Right now, both my brother and his wife are very thankful for these. I just wanted to let you know that. I'm glad to hear that they're thankful for them. And so... We all plan on handling this issue on our side here, but it seems that now Judith has gone and blocked Brennan's number. And since he can't talk with her now, there's no way for him to tell Judith that you're not his wife and have no connection to any of this. Ah, that's very true. Then the next time I hear something from Judith, I'll send you a text and let you know what's going on with her. How's that sound? Perfect. I'd really like you to do that for us. All right, then. Leave that up to me, then. I am so very sorry that we have to keep relying on you for something you have no part in. Right now, my brother is trying to think of ways to get you out of all this, so just give him a little longer, and I'm sure he'll think of something. But for the time being, you'll just have to hang tight. No worries, Angela. I really hope that this all can be resolved very soon. Lily, this would be Judith, and I just happened to get back into town. Thank you so much for taking great care of my daughter for me. I told you already, I have never been married to anyone and have no recollection of anyone ever being my husband before. Yeah, yeah, whatever. And about all that, since you already have her in your care, I'd like to leave my daughter with you forever now. <laughs> While I was in Hawaii with my boyfriend, he went ahead and proposed to me. And when it comes to my now fiancé, he is a man of great wealth and would have what many call a proper physique. And since he's so good, I don't really want my daughter getting in the way of us anymore. <laughs> 
so you can go ahead and keep her for me. She's not my problem anymore. You already happen to have problems making baby, so think of this as a heartwarming present from me. So please, take her away from me and keep her as your own now. <laughs> so what you're saying is that you're giving the rights to your daughter to Brennan? And since your daughter is already in the care of both him and his wife, you won't have any complaints about that, right? Hmm? That's a good point. Well, I'd much rather he have full custody of her now, as that leaves no way of me being responsible for her. Go ahead and tell him that's totally fine with me. Sounds good. Then in the next few days, I'm going to assume you'll most likely get a call from his lawyer that he'll be working with, and I'd like you to answer to them. Will do. And one last time, I'd like to tell you this. I am not Brennan's wife and have never been. You're still going to go on about that? <laughs> I happen to be Brennan's ex-girlfriend, and the two of us broke up over a year and a half ago. What? And then after breaking up with me, he happened to marry another woman. So as of right now, that's what I know about his situation. I just wanted to let you know that your daughter has been fed and housed by them for the last month and that they will be taking her in for good now. Hmm? You really cannot give that crap up, can you? Always gotta try and make me believe something as ridiculous as that now. I've already said that you're keeping my daughter now, so you can shut up about all that. Bye now! Lily? I am not letting you guys have my daughter anymore. Give her back to me right now. Hmm? I've already heard from those two that all the paperwork has been completed and that she's now their daughter. That guy that proposed to me before happens to be no good. And he told me things are off now because he found out I had a kid. And so he's gone and left me for dead now. What? You kept the fact that you have a daughter a secret from that man? Well, I had no other choice, all right? It's way too difficult for younger men to want to be with women like me who have a kid already with someone else, right? Well, I'm not really going to comment on that one, but come on, Judith. You can't just hide the fact that you have a child from your boyfriend like that, thinking he'd be okay marrying later when he finds out. I don't need that crap from you right now. I just want my baby back, so hurry up and hand her over to me. If you don't, I am no longer going to get any kind of money from Brennan as child support for her. I see. So that's why you ended up giving full custody of your guys' daughter back when you both divorced. It was all about that money from him. And it wasn't even like there was something wrong with Brennan anyway that made the court choose to give you full custody. I heard that you happened to have been cheating on him at the time, and when he asked for a divorce, you made up this whole story so that you could get your daughter from him. And it wasn't even about her. Who the hell cares about the past? Right now, all we need to be focused on is the fact that I don't want you guys to have her anymore. I'm her real mother, and I don't approve of this anymore, so give her back now. You're wasting your time telling me that. Me telling you all this will make things go a lot quicker for me since you're his wife. My god, I have told you this too many times now. I do not have a husband. No husband. The woman that's married to Brennan right now is a completely different person from me. And I told you, you can give all of that crap up now. Give me my dang kid back. You're not mentally stable, are you? I'm blocking you now. Uh, wait! Why are you blocking me? Because Judith never seemed to get a grasp of the situation I had been explaining to her, the lawyer that Brennan had been working with talked to her for the rest of us and gave her the same explanation. And when she had finally learned that she'd been talking to the wrong woman this whole time, her face turned bright red. And right as the lawyer told her that, she picked up her smartphone and completely wiped all the conversation we had and my contact off of it. After that, she was not able to get any more money from Brennan for her daughter, and instead, she had to start paying him. And because of this, she ran to his apartment and started to bang on his door while screaming for him to let her have her daughter back. And right as she was about to kick the door in, 
the new renter of that apartment opened it and looked her square in the eyes. Apparently, Brennan and his wife moved back into his parents' house, now that they both have a kid to take care of. With Judith no longer having her rich boyfriend with her and with her not receiving child support anymore, she had to start working a job. But she was fired from that job not even a week after getting it for some reason. And that left her with a life where every day she has to be worried about where her next meal will be coming from. Stella, can I talk to you for a moment? Alan, taking a break now? I'm on a break too, so it's fine. What's up? Well, you know about the gift for Mother's Day for our mom, right? I've been thinking about it for a while, you know? I finally made a decision, so I wanted to let you know. Ah, you mentioned it before. By telling me, does that mean you're planning to give something relatively expensive? Exactly. Well, it seems tough to cover it with just my allowance. If it's okay with you, Stella, could you contribute some money? What do you think? Since your mom has been taking care of me too, it's totally fine for me to chip in. Well, it depends on what it is. What are you thinking of sending? I'm thinking of sending her on a trip. Mother's Day is right before vacation, right? A trip, huh? If we go, it'll be during vacation, right? I have work too, so that's how it will be. I thought we could make it an early present. Since we only have one parent, I don't think she has ever been on a trip or anything. I think she'll be really happy. Did you talk to her about this? Before I contacted you, she called me. I briefly mentioned it to her at that time. She said it's okay to go for about two nights. I see. I know that a trip can be financially challenging, but I want to show a giving back to her. Can we somehow manage to use our savings? Well, it's true that she has taken care of us. Okay, I'll cover the remaining amount. Really? Thank you. Mom will be happy too. You're welcome. The details of the trip haven't been decided yet, right? We decided on it today, actually. She said she'd like to go to a hot spring if we go. We're going to plan to discuss it again. Then, let me know once the details are confirmed. I'll withdraw the money. Thank you so much. I know it's going to be a lot of trouble, but I'm counting on you. But are you okay? Vacation is coming soon, isn't it? From now, all the hotels must be fully booked, right? I'll look into that, including availability. Well, we've made some preliminary arrangements, so I think it'll be fine. I see, that's good then. Also, I'm sorry to say this to you, but for this trip, I want it to be just us, without you. I know it will make you feel lonely, but... I understand. It's your first trip together as a parent-child duo. I'm not completely oblivious to the situation. So go and enjoy it, just two of you. I really appreciate you. In return, I'll accompany you during the rest of vacation. Remember what you said, okay? I want to visit my parents' house and go out for some fun too. Make sure you keep me company, alright? Of course. I'll do my best to make sure you have a good time. Well then, I'll get back to work. Thank you so much for this time. Got it. I'll get back to work too. Good luck, Alan. Alan, how's it going for you? Have you arrived at the hotel already? We just checked in a little while ago. We're discussing where to have lunch with her right now. I'm glad you arrived safely. I looked up some websites briefly. And there are many delicious things in the area, right? What are you planning to eat? I'm torn between Chinese food and sushi. Both places look delicious. Lucky you. Now I feel like having something to eat too. Maybe I'll get some Chinese food for lunch today. In that case, we'll go for sushi. Don't compete in weird ways. But it's really good. I'd love to go to a hot spring too. 
Take me there next time, okay? Let's go on the next long weekend or something. By the way, I'm really sorry. Huh, what's wrong? Why the sudden apology? Well, Stella, you've listened to my selfishness, right? And because of that, I'm making you feel lonely. So I'm really sorry. It's fine, really. Besides, she's been good to me too. I gave my approval for this trip, remember? I'm not suddenly concerned about it or anything. Thank you, really. Instead, since you're already there, you should have fun. It would be pointless if you can't enjoy yourself because you're worried about me. You should apologize to her. You're right about that. I'll decide to enjoy myself to the fullest now. That's right. Just make sure you give me your full attention when you return. For now, cherish the time with her. That's what I'll do. Thank you so much. It's your first trip with her, after all. Usually, you go to visit her alone. But occasions like this should be treasured. As much as I enjoy it, I'll definitely buy back some souvenirs for you. Should you look forward to it too? Yeah, I'm waiting. And I know this might not be the best timing. But I'm planning to go out for drinks tonight. It's been a while. We're planning to do some sightseeing tomorrow morning. So I might be late if you try to contact me. If that's the case, it's totally fine. I'll refrain from contacting you unless it's an emergency. I'd appreciate it if you could do the same. Well then, I'm going out to eat. See you later. Let me know as soon as you wake up. I just woke up. By the way, I checked the call history and you've been calling since last night. What's with the phone calls? We're on a trip with my mom, so stop calling so much. Didn't I ask you to refrain from calling yesterday? I said to only contact you if it's an emergency, right? But you haven't been answering at all, and it's causing trouble. I'm sorry about that. So, what happened after all? Your mom passed away. The funeral is scheduled for the day after tomorrow. What? What kind of joke is this? I don't understand. You don't understand? That's my line. Aren't you on a trip with her? But last night, I received a call from the hospital saying, Your mother-in-law is in critical condition. Is it true? Where are you right now? I've been at the hospital since last night. I found it strange because you two were on a trip. Then I received a call from a relative and rushed there immediately. I've been calling you the whole time, you know? No, wait a minute. Seriously. Is that true that my mom passed away? You're joking, right? So I'm telling you what happened. When I arrived at the hospital, she was already gone. They were doing mortuary care on her when I got there. This can't be true. Anyway... I'll come back right away. About that, you know. You don't have to come back. Huh? What are you talking about? She's my mom, you know? That's exactly why. What were you doing when your own mother was in critical condition? Lying to me and probably having an affair, right? Stop with these baseless accusations. I haven't done anything like that. Then who are you on this trip with? Your mom is here. Where are you? Can't say anything, can you? Because that's the truth. Even if I were having an affair, so what? What does that have to do with my mom? Because it's relevant, I'm telling you. What are you talking about? Where's the relevance? When you occasionally went back to her house alone, it wasn't to visit her. It was just an excuse for your affair, right? Even more, you were also asking her for money. Why are you bringing up that now? The auntie who contacted me told me about it. She said that you only visited your mom when you were with me. And that she struggled financially because of the money you asked her. I was really surprised because I didn't know any of that. But even so, that doesn't justify this, right? The fact remains that I'm the only child of my mother. Do you have the right to stop me from visiting my own parent? 
I don't have that right. I can't even stop you from attending the funeral. Well then, that's fine. Stop interfering. But you know, it's not just my opinion. It's the collective sentiment of all your mom's relatives. Oh, uh, everyone. They don't want to meet someone like you. They're saying, don't come to the funeral. You don't have the qualification to bid farewell to a mother to who you caused suffering and betrayed your wife. Understand? Don't mess with me. I'm definitely going, all right? Oh, really? Well, do as you please then. Well, I don't think they'll let you in, though. What do you mean by they won't let you in? You'll find out when you come and see, won't you? Well then, I have preparations for her funeral. So please don't contact me anymore. Hey, Stella. Say something to them too. They're not letting me in at all. Didn't I tell you yesterday? They won't let you in. Have you finally understood? Why can they let you in and not me? I'm a real son, you know. It's just that they don't want you to attend. All the relatives are saying that if you come, they'll turn you away. In fact, they won't let you in, will they? But even so, this is just unbelievable. It's seriously annoying. Whose mother's funeral do you think this is? I don't think complaining there will make any difference. Anyway, just be quiet and behave, all right? No, I'll definitely go in. I'll go and have a talk with them. Seriously, it's impossible to reason with them. They said, how dare such an unfilial child like you show up? Seriously, stop joking around. Have you given up already? It's obviously a waste of time, and the funeral is about to start soon. That's exactly why. You're inside, aren't you? So tell them to let me through. Of course, I do not want to, right? Why should I have to help you? Let me tell you, I feel the same as everyone else. In fact, it's because you never paid attention to her until now, right? So why is it now? I never expected things to turn out like this. You're the one who caused all this, you know? And yet you still look like it's not your fault. How shameless can you be? Don't get mad at me just because I had an affair. It said having an affair is a sign of a man's worth, right? Just let it go and let me in already. It's up to us to decide that. Don't act defiant and say things that make no sense. And by the way, don't try to force your way in. If you do, I'll call the police. Don't make a big deal out of it. I just want to bid farewell to my mom. Even if that's the case, no one wants that. So, it's pointless. Plus, it would be troublesome if the police were called, right? It would be troublesome for me too, so just wait in silence. So you're okay with me having an affair? Ha! Huh, why do you think that? Because if your husband gets arrested, it would be troublesome, right? So, does that mean you're not concerned about the affair? Never! I just don't want the divorce process to be a hassle. I have no intention of forgiving you and the woman you had an affair with. I'll take as much money as I can from you. No, seriously, give me a break. I'll give back to you for this trip's expenses. So please forgive me. How are you going to repay? You didn't have that money, so you lied to me and went on the trip, right? Well, my mom passed away, right? That means there are mom's properties. Considering that, it would be a loss to get divorced now, you know? You understand that much, don't you? I can't believe you're saying such things when you're at a loss for words. It was the right decision not to let you in, after all. What do you mean by that? That's the reason why we're getting a divorce, because you don't understand that. Got it? Just stay quiet. Don't say anything that will embarrass my mother-in-law any further. Is that really okay? Don't you also want some? If we get divorced, you'll definitely regret it. 
I would regret it if I had stayed as your wife. So let's get divorced. It's the choice that won't make me regret. After that, I ignored his contacts and the funeral ended without any issues. After the funeral, he confronted me about the divorce, but with the help of the relatives who were present, I managed to silence Alan. We went to the city hall together and submitted the divorce papers, and we got divorced. As for her money that he had been talking about, there was no significant inheritance to speak of, especially considering that he had been begging for money. Additionally, he had to pay me alimony, and he broke up with his affair partner. Now, he lives a difficult life. After the divorce from him, I enjoy my independent life. I regularly visit my ex-mother-in-law's grave, reporting on my current situation and cleaning the grave. Even though I divorced him, his mom is still an important mother to me, so I will continue to live without forgetting that.